It's not quite the job description you expect when you see the beautiful fabric spread out in the Andover studio of Museum Textile Services. We like to say that textile conservators have to be willing to deal with poop and dead things in order to really do your job well. Um, Chronicle didn't encounter exactly those surprises when we visited, but Director and Chief Conservator Camille Myers-Breeze told us her job can take many forms. Sometimes we might be deinstalling an exhibit, working in hard hats, on ladders, in conditions that are dirty and hot and loud and uncomfortable. And then other days we might spend eight hours looking through a microscope or with an optivisor, doing tiny work with the skinniest needles you've ever seen. At the heart of every one of those projects is the art and science of conservation. Conservation aims to preserve the history of the artifact. So if it has been altered or restored in the past, we won't necessarily remove that because it's part of the object's history. We are interested in physical stabilization and preparing something so it may be put on exhibit, displayed in your home, or in very rare occasions, used again in a responsible way. Myers Breeze and studio manager Samantha Hemp use specially treated water to wash this shawl, drawing out decades of dirt and dust. The piece is from around the turn of the 20th century and was likely worn by a client's family member. This is a good example of something that is stable enough. It could be worn for a special occasion. This beautiful dress came to us from a woman who found it in a brown cardboard box in her house. Myers Breeze's work here is focused on a frequent trouble spot. Armpits are an area of particular concern when stabilizing historic garments. You can see that there's a ring of discoloration. So I put almost invisible stitching along rips in the fabric and I've covered everything with this very thin color match net. Clients include museums, libraries, and historic societies, but Museum Textile Service also conserves art, clothing, quilts, and more for private individuals. The main thing that's exciting about all of the items that come in is they all have a story, and they're all important to the person that brings them to us. So we get to hear about the story, and the item becomes special to us. Caring for an object that has value beyond money also drives Barrett Keating. My favorite thing I love to do is fixing a piece for an owner that has great sentimental value to it. But when a woman says, my mother rocked me in that chair, and my grandmother rocked my mother in that chair, and you see the history and you see that she wants to conserve it so that it will go on to her daughter, that makes it all worthwhile. Keating runs his own furniture conservation studio in North Falmouth. It's the kind of job he always knew he wanted. Five years old, I remember I knew I was going to do working with my hands. So as I grew up, I started building furniture and boat building as well. Decades of furniture making and fixing led him to seek out training in conservation from places such as the Smithsonian and the Getty Museum. In conservation, it's basically a lot of science, forensic science. Think of CSI, except it's CSI for art. Keating used those investigative skills when this mantle from 1890 arrived at his workshop. Covered in eight layers of large, flaking, potato chip-like pieces of paint, I proposed to the owner that we do microscopic finish analysis to see all of the layers. We have taken these off with chisels and scalpels over the period of over a year. All of that work has finally brought Keating down to the original paint. He'll add gold in areas where his analysis showed there would have been gilding. So this is a great story of somebody who finds a diamond in the rough and says, you know, we'd like to conserve it. We want to save that original paint. Keating has a number of projects underway, including working with a colleague to bring a 1795 square piano forte back to life. This piano belonged to a family and has been passed down. It'll be wonderful to bring this back to its original glory, to hear it in the owner's home and playing music again. Mm, it's great. Back to Museum Textile Services, Camille describes her job as <laughs> advocating mm -hmm. for the artifacts. Which means she will not alter the original structure. She will clean and she will preserve the item, but she won't turn it into a quilt or pillow for a customer. And she's currently working with people in Vermont that have been impacted by the recent flooding oh, there. Good for her. Coming up, a puzzle with no easy solution.